Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to prove Cauchy's residue theorem. And then, as promised, I will also prove these two formulas down here. So let's get going. The first thing we have to do is to draw a bit. So here we have our contour gamma. And in our contour, we're going to have some isolated singularities, denoted as C0, C1, and so on. Here I would like you to notice that in this case, we're going to have three isolated singularities. But just know that the key concepts of this proof can be applied to whichever amount of isolated singularities you have. So in short, the proof will still be valid, but I don't have to draw so much. The next thing we are going to do is that we are going to continuously deform our contour gamma into the following. And the key things I want to do here with our new contour is to isolate the isolated singularities with a circle each, and then have a line that goes up and down from these circles. And you will probably realize why I'm doing this in just a moment. This new contour can be broken up into its smaller parts. So we're going to have gamma 0, gamma 1, and gamma n for circles. And then we're going to have two pair of lines that goes between the circles. And here we'd like you to notice that the only difference between the lines in each pair is the orientation. So since we were able to deform one contour into another, we can now use the deformation invariance theorem to get the following. And notice here that I'm going to break up our new contour into its smaller parts right from the start. Since if I do this, we can more easily see that the integrals along the contours L1 and L-1 cancel each other out, since the only difference between these two is the orientation of a contour, and the same thing can be said for the contours L2 and L-2. So in the end we are going to end up with the following expression. And from this we can draw the conclusion that the integral along the bigger contour gamma is simply made up of the sum of the smaller integrals which are taken along these contours that contains the isolated singularities. The next step is that we take one of these integrals, take the first one for example, and then we simply try to determine it. And we can do this by using the function's Laurent series expansion. So if we rewrite the function f with the help of its Laurent series expansion around the isolated singularity, which in this case is at c0, then we get the following. And now we can continue by splitting this integral up into two smaller ones. And I do this because I want to separate the analytic part and the principal part of the Laurent series. So now we have that the integrand in the first integral is simply the analytic part of the Laurent series. So that thing will always be analytic. So the whole integral is simply going to be equal to zero by Cauchy's integral theorem. So the only thing we have left to do now is to determine the integral of the principal part of the Laurent series. And we can do that by once again splitting this thing up into two separate integrals. And this time I'm simply going to take out the term n is equal to 1 from the principal part. And you will see why in just a minute. So we can determine the last integral by using parametrization since the contour gamma zero is a circle centered around C0 with some radius r, so we can parameterize it with the following expression. And here the angle alpha goes between 0 and 2 pi. And if we now use this parametrization, we get the following. And remember that we have to change our upper and lower limits, since we are changing the variable we are integrating with respect to. The next thing we can do is to cancel out some common terms, and then we can continue by moving out all the constants in the expression. And now we can simply solve this integral the normal way. So by using the primitive function of the integrand, we get the following. And we can simplify this by cancelling out the two i's. And now we can simply insert our start and end points into this expression. So if we insert 2 pi and 0, we get the following. e raised to the power 0 is always going to be equal to 1. And then for our next step, we are going to use this formula here, which is called Euler's formula. Because if we insert 2 pi as our angle into this formula, we get the following. So here we can see that e raised to the power of i times 2 pi is simply equal to 1. And now I can rewrite the first term in our parenthesis to the following. And now we might more easily see that we simply have e raised to the power of i times 2 pi, which is simply 1, raised to some power. And 1 raised to whichever power is simply equal to 1, which means that the whole integral is going to be equal to 0. 
And this was the reason why we split the uh, integral up into two integrals, because one of them would be equal to zero. And now the only thing that is left to do is to determine the first integral up here. And we can do that by using Cauchy's integral formula. Because if we use this formula, we get that this integral is going to be equal to 2 pi i times a minus 1. And as you might remember, a minus 1 is just another name for the residue of a function at this point. So if we now backtrack to what we started with, we can see that this integral is simply going to be equal to 2 pi i times the residue at the singularity. And if we had done the same procedure for the other integrals as well, we would have gotten the same results, which is that they are completely defined as 2 pi i times the residue. So this thing is simply going to be equal to 2 pi i times the sum of all the residues which is the residue theorem. And I think that is actually really funny that the only thing that is left standing after we have done this integral along this big contour gamma are the residues, because that means that the name residues are actually really suitable for its properties. Last time we introduced three different options that you can use when you are trying to determine the residue at some point. And now we will continue by proving the last two options. And I will in fact also show you that all these three options are in fact the same option in disguise, since all of them uses that we have to write out the Laurent series expansion and then determine the coefficient a minus 1. So if we have that c0 is a simple pole, then we know that the Laurent series expansion for this function around the point c0 is going to be the following. And here I would like you to notice that since we have a pole of order 1, all of these terms here are simply going to be equal to zero. And the next step from here is to try to isolate the coefficient a minus one, since that thing is our residue. We can start by multiplying both sides by c minus c zero raised to the power one to free up our coefficient a minus one. And now we can simply take the limit on both sides and let c approach c zero. Since if we do this, then all of these parentheses to the right side here of the equation will simply become zeros. So this formula here will give you the coefficient a minus 1, also known as the residue. And this was the same formula we had up here, so by doing this we have managed to prove this second option. But if we instead had that the pole was of a higher order, let's say of order m, then the Laurent series expansion for this function around the point c0 would become the following. And in this expansion, the highest negative order would be of order m, right? Since the pole in this case was of order m. And now we can once again try to free up our coefficient a minus 1 by using limits and multiplication. But here we have to be a bit clever because if I just multiply by the denominator for the coefficient a minus 1, then we will still end up with terms that are simply divided by 0 when we are taking the limit. So instead I'm going to multiply both sides by the highest negative order denominator. So in this case that's going to be c minus c0 raised to the power of m. So if we do this we get the following. And the next step here is that we take the derivative m minus 1 times on both sides of this equation. Because if we do that then we will be able to eliminate this factor here, c minus c0 raised to the power of m minus 1, that is right besides the coefficient a minus 1. And now the great thing is that now we can once again take the limit on both sides of this equation and let c approach c0. Because if we do that then all of these parentheses here will simply become zeros. And by simplifying this we are going to end up with the following expression. And now we can simply divide this expression by the faculty of m minus 1, which will give us the following. So this formula here is going to be equal to the coefficient a minus 1, also known as the residue. And by that we have managed to prove this formula. And by doing all of this I hope that I have been able to show you that all of these three options uses the same principle. That is that you have to write out the Laurent series expansion around the point c0 and then solve for the coefficient a minus 1. And that was everything for this time. Consider subscribing if you like what I do here. And thanks for watching.